I sit alone in my four cornered room, staring at candles. Who got me? Real radio, real radio dude. Oh. Man, there was this one time where I was dealing with something and I was thinking about it all night, all day, just trying to figure it out. And as I was trying to think about it, I'm like, God, I need you to respond, but I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to work this thing out, get it figured out in my head. Uh, then I started to make decisions on what my mind was telling me and what I was thinking. Um, only to later learn that, you know, every now and then, um, our minds can play uh, tricks on us. Uh, shout out to the Ghetto Boys uh, who had a song uh, with that title. Uh, it kind of talked about sometimes things happen in our life and our mind just messes with us. Our mind uh, plays tricks on us. Even asking myself, uh, what is God doing uh, in the middle of everything that we're experiencing, in the middle of everything that we're, we're seeing? And uh, that's where people who have faith, people who don't have faith, uh, sometimes our perception is uh, different from reality and it's a struggle within. You may be like me where you've made decisions based on what was going on in your mind at the time. I want to encourage you, I want to bless you uh, because I do believe that God wants to speak to us and let us know what He's saying. So come hang out with us this week. I want to talk to you about that. Uh, just have some honest conversation about how do we deal with the fact that every now and then our mind plays tricks on us? victory on today. Yes, God. God, we thank you for all the brothers and sisters that you have sent our way for some honest, raw, and real conversation about what you are saying in regards to our situation. Lord, even before we hear from you through the preach word, we've already heard from you through worship. And through worship, you've reminded us of so much, Father God. Through worship, you've encouraged us, Father God. Through worship, Father God, we, we feel like that greater is coming. Through worship, God, we confess that we will see a victory. Now, Lord, as we continue to go forward, we ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to have his way. Father God, I ask that your Holy Spirit will allow somebody to be able to focus in without distraction. I, will allow you, I ask you right now, Father God, to allow somebody that is tuning in for the first time to know that you didn't send them here by accident, that you're not a God of coincidence. You sent them here because you have a plan for their life. You sent them here because you have promises for them. And oh Lord, Father God, heal them right now. Speak to them right now. And God, when it's all said and done, I pray over our foundation, those individuals who've been with us since the beginning. I thank you for them, God. I thank you uh, for what they have done. I thank you for their witness. I thank you for their development. I thank you, Father God, for this ministry. And oh Lord, we come into this place expecting you to do a great work today, a work that only you can do. And God, when it's all said and done today, we're careful to give your name all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. It is in the powerful name of Jesus, the people of God say and pray together. Amen. 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 Let's celebrate God. Type in victory. Let's celebrate God. Confess victory in the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Our scripture today is found in James, the first chapter. I'll be reading verse 2 through 8. James 1, verse 2 through 8. And the word of the Lord reads as follows. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. 
For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all. Amen. Unstable in all his ways. We'd just like to use for our sermon title for today, my mind's playing tricks on me. Shout out to my 90s baby. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Band, what y'all know about that? Now, now watch where you're at, band. Just give, them, just give them a little bit. Just give them a little bit so we can help them out today. Anybody know that right there? Y'all remember when that, when, that, when that beat used to drop and you was riding down the road and whatever you was riding in back then, you had to have a windows, you had to have a little bit of a lean with it as you was thinking about the fact that every point in, your mind was playing tricks on you. Amen, band. All right, now, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Y'all got a hymn for him? We got to get back right now. No, we, we good. Listen, all right, men and women of God, I want to talk to you for a minute uh, in the best way that I know how from an honest and real place. Um, I, I want to talk to you about the fact that if we are honest, every now and then our mind plays tricks on us. Uh, this phrase comes from the ghetto boys who... Uh, were a, uh, a rap group out of H-Town, out of Houston in the early 90s. They rapped about their experiences coming up in Houston, Texas. Shout out to all my Texas people out there. You see, the Ghetto Boys had a song that I remember from my childhood. I remember it so well because it was on the radio. I remember it so well because some of the high school bands used to play it, and the song was simply called My Mind's Playing Tricks on Me. You see, it's a powerful song that uh, depicts several scenes in the video uh, as the rapper tries to tell the story of the battles that they were facing, not necessarily on the streets, but the battles that they were facing in their minds the battles that they were facing because of the environment they were in and honestly the battles that they were facing sometimes because of the decisions that they made the lyrics are powerful if you ever get a chance to print them out you should they describe mental anguish and they describe the exhausting life of living as a gangster Scarface who's still on the scene drops one of the most powerful verses when he talks about day by day it's possible it's impossible to cope and he talked about he felt like he was the one that was on dope but what really uh, stuck out to me when I was listening to this song recently as he was talking about his struggles he talked about the fact that every Sunday morning he was in service praying for forgiveness because of the lifestyle that he was living he was hustling uh, at the time he was living a street life at that time he was trying to find an exit out of the business and he says that I know the Lord is looking at me but yet and still it's hard for him to feel happy I wonder if anybody could relate to Scarface you know the Lord is looking at you you know that God is real and even with your knowledge of a real God if you were to be honest it's hard sometimes for you to feel happy Scarface says he often drifts and drives while he's driving he says having fatal thoughts of suicide. Listen, that's not something to play with, but we are honest. We all know somebody or it's been us that has had a fatal thought of, you know what? I wonder if it would be better if I just wasn't here anymore. And listen, that's not something to play with. And who knows if God sent someone right now who's dealing with that, go ahead and hit us in the inbox because that's something real. That's something not to play with. And we want to be able to minister to that. But if you're a person that has had that thought and God brought you over, feel free to testify because what you got over somebody else is still in right now Scarface goes on to tell us that not only was he struggling with suicidal thoughts not only was he struggling with whether or not God was listening when he showed up in church he had a, a, a girlfriend at home and a baby and he didn't want his child to be without a father so he didn't take his own life and then he goes on to say even though he didn't trust his woman as his mind was going back and forth he did have to recognize that she did help him out sometimes but then every now and then he would call her outside of her name and then he goes back to the other side and says you know what I really love her I want to be with her now I'm gonna go on over here and be by myself you know forget all of that my mind's playing tricks on me. Men and women of God, I brought you this on today because this song and this sermon will wrestle with real world issues that all of us deal with, such as post-traumatic stress disorder that 
term got more popular after the Iraq war because so many soldiers were coming back from Iraq as well as Afghanistan dealing with it. But post-traumatic stress disorder is something that impacts everybody. If you've been through anything traumatic, more often than not, you're dealing with the aftershocks of what happened. It's kind of like that earthquake we just had here in North Carolina. Although there was the big event, there were those that were close to the big event that were still dealing with the aftershocks. I want to talk to somebody that you've been through something right now and you're still dealing with the aftershocks. It's not as bad as it used to be, but every now and then you find yourself dealing with the aftershocks. Listen, you might say, now why would you pick such a song uh, to tell us about? Why would you put such a theme for your sermon premises? Well, I picked this particular song and I picked this particular theme because this song was a song that left the ghettos of Houston, Texas, and it crossed over into the mainstream. It reached number 23 on the Billboard Hot 100, meaning that little black boys were buying it, little white boys were buying it, little white girls were buying it, little white boys were buying it, teenagers were buying it. Then everybody was buying this song in the early 90s because if everybody was being honest, they knew that they knew what it felt like for their minds to play tricks on them. Men and women of God, I'm here to tell you that a lot has changed since 1991, but a lot still remains the same. If we are to be honest, as it relates to the condition of our minds, as it relates to our struggles, every now and then the mind plays tricks on us. And listen, for those of y'all that are extra holy and those of y'all that have been baptized 82 times, I want you to know that I'm not glorifying the gang life. I'm not excusing bad behavior, but I want you to understand something. At the time that these lyrics were written, many people in the community that looked like me were dealing with systemic issues that placed them in a disadvantaged position, and when they were in a position of disadvantage, they ultimately made decisions that they probably otherwise would not have made. Oh, don't be so holy now. Talk to me. Anybody ever made some bad decisions in the middle of a bad situation? You were struggling and you were going to do whatever you had to do to get out. Come on, y'all talk to me so y'all can understand that we are all real. Oh, don't worry about it. I know you're looking down at the ghetto boys, but what if we go to Proverbs 30? That was an individual by the name of Agur, A-G-U-R. The sayings of Agar's son, uh, Jakeh, J-A-K-E-H. This is what he says, Psalm 30. In the Bible, he says this, God, I'm weary. I'm worn out. He says, I'm too stupid to be a human. I lack common sense. He says, I have not mastered human wisdom, nor do I know the Holy One. He says this to God a little bit further down in that Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30, he says, oh God, I beg two favors from you. He says this. Let me have these two favors. Proverbs 30, if you want to look where I'm coming from. He says, before I die, help me to never tell a lie, which suggests that he knew himself that he had the propensity to lie sometimes. Shout out to everybody who's ever lied on occasion. But he says, second, he said, God, don't give me poverty or riches. He says, gives me enough to satisfy my needs. He said, listen, if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is God? This was an honest brother in the book of Proverbs. He's being real and saying, God, I can't handle it if you give me too much. I might just say, I don't need you no more. I got my gators now, God. I got the Rolex right now, God. I got my Gucci suit right now, God. I don't need you. He said, but God, don't make me rich, but don't get, don't make me poor. Why did he say that? Because in the text, uh, this particular individual said this, God, if I'm poor, I just might steal and insult your holy name. Oh, I love this brother because he's raw and real, and he comes to the term that if God is not on his side, he's going to make decisions that he would not otherwise have made. If he's struggling bad enough, he might do some bad things. And I don't know about you. I don't know what your struggle is. I don't know what you're going through. But I'm here to talk to somebody right now 
who's in the middle of a situation and your mind is going back and forth. You're hearing one side thing on one side and you're hearing something else on the other. And even though your mind may be messing with you, right and wrong may look like twins. There is a word from the Lord. You see, ultimately we will learn from these lyricists, the ghetto boys, and this lyricist in Proverbs 30 is that the tribulations are we that we are going through, they have an impact on our mind. But even though our mind is being impacted, God is still up to something. Can you type that in right where you are that God is up to something? Can I talk to you a minute for a minute about your mind? Can I tell you that every now and then your mind plays tricks on you? You, you, you know how I know this because I have been in a situation where my mind has played tricks on me. When your mind is playing tricks on you, it's the result of the enemy's work. It is the result of Satan trying to get into a space that should be opera operated by the presence and promise of God. It is like God. It was like on one side of the equation, you have Satan telling you uh, that you should question whether God is real. You have Satan telling you that you shouldn't have any faith. You have Satan telling you that you are unworthy. You have Satan telling you that drugs will numb whatever you're going through. You have Satan telling you that you're going to stay broken. You have Satan telling you to doubt everything that you know. You have Satan telling you that the wound will never heal, but on the other side of the house, uh, you have God trying to remind you that you will overcome. You have God trying to remind you that this faith thing is real. You have God trying to remind you there's still something amazing about his grace. You have God trying to remind you that you have been delivered but y'all ain't feeling me but then on the other equation somebody is still reminding you of your failure somebody is still telling you to take yourself out somebody is still telling you to remain bitter somebody was still telling you if God loved you he wouldn't have went through it and just when you're about to believe that on the other side of the house God is telling you that there is wisdom God is telling you that there is is freedom God is telling you that there is power in prayer God is telling you that there is peace that passes all understanding and I know you are like me you've heard both sides some of you are standing over here but this morning some of you are over here and this is why we are having this sermon because every now and then our mind plays tricks on us men and women of God can I tell you what that feels like for me? When your mind is messing with you and your mind is playing tricks on you, it'll have you fighting things that are either not real or are exaggerated. Uh, when, when your mind is messing with you, somebody could say something about you or you heard somebody said something about you. And what you heard was hurtful because the enemy wouldn't have sent it if it wasn't going to hurt you. So he knows where to get all of us. And he sent just the right thing to get under your skin. And that came your way. And so now it's come your way. You're frustrated and you're preparing to respond to what you heard that somebody said. And what happens with the body and the mind, you're starting to focus on this exaggerated battle. You're starting to focus on this he said, she said. And all of a sudden, instead of focusing on your future, all of a sudden, instead of focusing on the vision, all of a sudden, you're focused on what the naysayers said. All of a sudden, you're fighting, preparing for a battle that has already been won. I need to talk to somebody right now that in your head sometimes you can actually make things worse than they actually are because the Bible I read reminds us that victory belongs to Jesus and whatever we are dealing with we have victory as long as we remain in him but sometimes when we are going through the struggle in our mind we can forget that there is victory in Jesus. We get to the point where we start quoting Tupac I ain't a killer but don't push me 
me and on Tuesday morning you pushed me too far so I got to go a little set it off because I have t- took all I can stand and I can't stand no more men and women of God I'm trying to help you in the lightest way possible to let you know that every now and then you are struggling with things unnecessarily because the enemy has grabbed a hold of your mind and when that happens it's a dangerous space when that happens you are off track when that happens you're not focused on your assignment and if you're not careful you will stay there and you will never do the thing that God has called you to do but don't worry about it Jeremiah told us that this is a real struggle for all of humanity matter of fact Jeremiah said that our heart our mind is deceitful and who can know it men and women of God this message is on my heart because I don't know exactly what you're struggling with in your mind but I know you're struggling with something because I'm going to tell you right now the enemy knows that if he can ever get a hold of your mind he got everything else if he if he messes with your mind he has everything else because it all starts with how we think and if our thinking gets messed up he'll start to let us think that God is not real if our thinking gets messed up he will start to let you think that worship is not important if our thinking gets messed up you'll start to look in other places when you still be looking for the hills from which cometh your help men and women of God I'm trying to help you this morning because what we are going to do in this particular sermon we're going to be all over the place but we still going to be focused on what God will have us to go hey listen I want to tell you something this is the only sermon on, on, on TV today that you're going to get some ghetto boys and some American psychology go ahead and type that here right now they're going to get some ghetto boys and some American psychology listen men and women of God I want to bless you and I want to help you there was this psychologist by the name of Albert Ellis who in 1955 developed what we call rational emotive behavior therapy don't worry don't swipe I'm gonna make this simple for you y'all know how we do he was an atheist that's right he didn't believe in God but later in his life he even concluded himself that his understandings of psychology could actually connect with people of faith. Men and women of God, the aim of, of his particular uh, psychology, uh, this, this rational emotive uh, behavioral therapy, uh, was simply to do this. It was to adjust um, emotional and behavioral problems and to help everybody to live a happy life. Listen to what he said. He suggested, and I want you to listen real close to this. Listen to what he said. Tell me if y'all agree. Tell me if you disagree with it. He said this. He suggested that because people, he said people for the most part are good. He said, but because people have erroneous beliefs about the situation that they are in, those beliefs cause disturbances in their minds, but those disturbances can be disputed and those disturbances can be changed. Can I make it plainer? He simply says that while people are good, at the same time people practice self-defeating behavior and make irrational decisions based on what they have experienced or based on what is going on in their mind. He goes on to say this, listen real good. He said, circumstances don't call symptoms. It is our perception of those circumstances that cause symptoms. Y'all caught that? That was fast. We in school for a minute. He says circumstances don't call symptoms. It is our perception of those circumstances that cause the symptoms. If I can make that plainer. In other words, if I'm, uh, if my perception of what I'm going through right now, if I if my perception of my current job situation, my current relationship, my current finance, my current health, if my perception of that situation is dark, what Ellis suggests is it is not that the situation has the power, your perception of it is what causes you to be depressed. It's not that you're in a struggle that has the power, it is your perception of it that keeps you up all night long. It's not that your divorce has the power, it's your perception of it that has you living the way you are living. Do y'all believe that? Talk to me today. I don't know if you believe it, but I do know what Charles Swindle said about it. He said that life is 10% what happens to us and 90% of how we respond. I want to ask somebody as it relates on what's going on in your world, as it relates to your current perception, uh, what are you thinking? What is your perception of what you are going through? Ellis says this, that we must learn to think rationally. And 
when I was looking at this from, uh, from his level, from the academic level, I had to say, well, if he is telling non-believers that we must learn to think rationally because it's all about perception more so than it is anything else, I said, what does that mean for the believer? Can I talk to the believers? What does that mean for you? Do you believe that in the end of the day, you have to learn to, to think rationally? What did he tell us about thinking rationally? Well, Ellis gave us these ABCs. ABC, he says, the A is the activating event. He says, if you're going to learn to think rationally in a situation, you have to look at what caused the situation that you are in. He went on to say individuals that have been abused, individuals who are questioning, for me, individuals that are questioning God, wherever you may be, what is the activating event? Do you know how you are in the situation that you are in? Do you know why you think the way that you do? Do you know why you have the struggles that you have? What is the activating event? But then he says, it doesn't matter what activated. He says, what's your belief as it relates to the event? Men and women of God, I believe that's where our faith in Jesus can come in. And we're going to see that in the text. Your belief uh, must be rational for you to make it over. And you must dispute irrational beliefs. Can I tell you what that looks like in psychology when you go into a counselor's office and who is using this technique on you? You're going to tell them all of the things that you've been going through. And they're going to say, it's crazy for you to think like that. But sometimes, if you were to be honest, that psychologists don't really know your story. That psychologists don't really know what you went through. And sometimes, maybe, depending on who the psychologist is, they can or cannot relate. That's why it's good to have a great psychologist who can help you to understand uh, physically what's going on in your body. And it's real good if you got a psychology or a psychologist who knows Jesus. What do you mean, preacher? Because the psychologist that knows Jesus will not tell you what's rational based on what's in the textbook will not tell you what's rational based on his or her personal experience the psychologist that knows Jesus will tell you what is rational based on what thus saith the Lord I wish I had somebody that understood the ABC's the activating event the behavior of the event and the C being the consequences the consequences speak to the reason why we do what we do because we've been through so much uh, I want to talk to the people this morning whose mind is still playing tricks on you. You're not a bad person because you had suicidal thoughts. You're not a bad person because you got depressed. You're not a bad person because you quit. It is because everything that you've been through and your perception of all of that stuff, your perception of your setback has you in an emotional place uh, that I believe that Jesus is going to free somebody from the day. You ought to get excited right now before I get finished. Uh, because you've been where you are long enough uh, and through the power of the Holy Ghost uh, you gotta know Jesus to get the power of the Holy Ghost uh, through the power of the living God I believe that God can help us uh, to get our mind right uh, I gotta ask you the question what if you base what is rational on what God says in his word and believe it or not that's what we're going to do if we're going to think rationally about what is happening in our life. Uh, if we're going to think rationally about what God is saying, we're going to look at what God is saying to us instead of what our circumstance is saying to us. The goal of this particular message is simple and plain. The goal as we go through this is that someone would be healed. I believe in the healing power of Jesus Christ. If you still believe in healing, can you just type in, heal me, Lord? Lord. Some people don't believe in the healing power of the Lord. I still believe in that. For those that believe, type that in. Heal me, Lord. And if you know God has healed you, why don't you just type it in for somebody else? Heal him, Lord. Heal her, Lord, because there is power here. But listen, there is something that we learn about the battle that we are dealing with right now. Every now and then, God does the, the miracle in the moment. But there are some times where God requires us to go through the process. Say process, process. You see, every
every now and then God does it instantaneously but sometimes when we're dealing with struggles in our minds you're going to have to go through the process it's okay if you got to see professional help it's okay if you got to go talk to the pastor it's okay if your grandma prays for you shout out to all the praying grandmas ain't nobody can pray like grandmama pray men and women of God I know it's a process you say wait a minute there is no process with Jesus of course there's a process with Jesus you do remember Mark the 8th chapter don't you when he arrived at Bethsaida he went and the, the people brought a blind man to Jesus anybody remember this story they took the blind man to Jesus and, and they led the, G, the man to Jesus and then Jesus did what he had done before he spit on the man's eyes he laid hands on him Lord I don't mind if you lay hands on us this morning Jesus laid hands on him and asked the man an interesting question Question. He said, can you see anything? Now the man replied, yes, I can see, but I can't see very clearly, Jesus. Everything around me looks like, cheese, G, uh, like trees. Jesus replies by, by placing his hand on the man's eyes again. And at that time, his eyes were open and his sight was completely restored. And he could see everything clearly, men and women of God. If we're going to not play church, we can't pretend like everybody. Everybody's healing is going to be instantaneous. God does it that way sometimes. But if we're going to be raw and real, there are some of us who have to go through a process. Right? I, may, I may not all stop drinking all at once. Uh, I may not stop smoking all at once. Uh, I may not stop doing everything all at once. Uh, but God is in the business of healing me. I may be in my sick bed right now and I pray for God to heal me. But I'm still hooked up to the IV. But guess what? Yesterday day I had solid food and in a few more days I'm going to have some chicken and after a while I'm going home I'm just trying to talk to somebody who's just about to let go because your mind is playing tricks on you I want you to know you like that brother in the book of Mark it's just a process it's just a process and just like that brother your testimony going to be so sweet because you'll be able to tell the next brother you'll be able to tell the next sister hold on a little while longer and your change is gonna come can y'all talk to me if you know your change gonna come oh testify in the text box uh, that you was born by the river in a little old tent listen I don't care y'all ghetto boys I don't care y'all Alba Ellis uh, I give you a little Sam Cook uh, and just like the river I've been running ever since but guess what I go type it in it's been a long time coming but I know my change is going to come. Listen, I just want to encourage you because for some of us it's going to be a while. But I want you to know that your change is going to come. Men and women of God, listen, let me tell you this. The mind processes trauma differently than what God has said in his word. That's the first thing I want to tell you to understand right now. We're not going to be here long, but I want you to understand this. In our text... James says this, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I will never diminimize your feelings. That's the worst thing you can do to somebody. Somebody come to you talking about what they're going through, and you're all, it'll be all right. It, it, you don't really... I, unless you're speaking from a faith perspective, you really don't know, right? And just because it was easy for you to go get over, it, it may not be that easy for me. So I'm never going to belittle what you are going through, and I'm never going to belittle your trauma. But remember what I said as it relates to rational, emotive, behavioral therapy. Now we're in the text. In the world, our trials and tribulations are sent to defeat us. The mind tells you that what you are going through is to depress you. But God is saying what you are going through is to perfect you. It's right there. Uh, God is saying what you are going through will provide 
patience. And when you are patient and I'm perfecting you, uh, then I will do a perfect work in your life. You will be complete and lacking nothing. Did you hear what I said? The world is telling you that what you are going through is to defeat you. The world is telling you that the mistake that you made is unforgivable. But God is saying you ought to count it all joy. That sounds real churchy, don't it? I hope we have some folk that don't go to church all the time with us. That's what I pray for. If you're here today and you don't go to church, you ain't here by accident. You're here because the Lord sent you. In the church, we talk about joy all the time. We walk around and we, we bob and weave and say that we got joy and then we go home and cry. But let me tell you something about joy as God defines joy. It's not the fact that your trauma is not real. It's not the fact that your struggle is not real. Joy comes from the Greek word chiro, which reminds us to do what? It reminds us that joy means that we have a favorable disposition leaning towards the Lord. In other words, I can be glad because of the position of my mind. Can I unpack that for you? Joy means that I'm conscious of the grace of God even though I cry late in the midnight hour. In other words, in my mind, I have come to the conclusion that God favors me and my family. And because God favors me and my family, I won't be where I am for long. You can talk about me right now. You can make fun of me right now but because God favors me I have joy because I won't be here for long I wish I had somebody to help me out type that in and I won't be here for long I am glad because God favors me and I have a joy that we call unspeakable saints y'all help me preach to the unchurched tell them what it means when we talk about unspeakable joy and the old church is all we can tell you it's a joy that we have that the world didn't give us and the world can't take it away it's me my joy is not based on my circumstance my joy is not defeated by my setback my joy is not beaten by my sorrow my joy is in the fact that sooner or later it's got to turn in my favor and he's working it out for my good men and women of God I want to tell you something the mind tells you when you are sick uh, you will always be sick uh, but the joy of the Lord being my strength uh, reminds me that even when I'm sick uh, even when I'm struggling uh, that God is up to something can you type that in wherever you are that God is up to something what you are going through on this side is saying destroy you but God is saying perfect you I know I said it once uh, but I gotta say it again because I'm trying to help somebody because the next thing you need to understand is that the mind will tell you to seek other solutions to problems that only God can solve. So if you're walking with me right now, you're saying, okay, I hear you, Pastor. I hear what you're saying. That I'm supposed to count it all joy. And I understand what you're saying, that he's perfecting me. And I understand that you're saying I got to be patient. But if we were to be honest, this is where we have a problem. Even though the mind tells us to seek other solutions, we have to remember that we have to seek God for the problems that only God can solve. Verse 5 says this, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. We're going to talk about that reproach word in a minute. And it will be given to him. James says, You, you right there where you are on your device, or going through something and you've decided that you're going to fix it yourself because God is taking so long. Amen, somebody. But this is what God says. Not only does God require us to be patient, God says that he gives wisdom liberally. That means freely, like, like he's making, can I use make it rain and not get in trouble? It's like he's making wisdom rain down, you know. For those of y'all who used to go to them places I've never been, uh, they, uh, when you go in there, I heard they used to make it rain with cash. I ain't never been, but, but I heard that's what they used to do. When God says that they give, he gives wisdom liberally, it's just like he's pouring out wisdom on us. He, he doesn't want us to be ignorant. He doesn't want us to be without knowledge. He's liberally giving wisdom. And guess what he says? He gives this wisdom liberally and without reproach. 
What's that word reproach mean? It means that when God gives you wisdom, when God gives you favor, when God answers your prayer, when he gives you this wisdom, he gives it without blame or shame. Reproach speaks to the fact that you're going to blame someone, you're going to shame someone. But God says, I don't care what you've been, I don't care what your question is. If you ask, it shall be given. I want you to know the plan for your life because that's the only way that you're going to operate in it. I want to give wisdom liberally so that your mind will stop messing with you and you will know what I'm saying to you in comparison to what the world is saying to you. Men and women of God, all I'm trying to do is tell you that if you are in the middle of a struggle if something is going on in your mind it's okay to ask can you type that in right there it's okay to ask that's why some of us have been in the storm too long we are not willing to ask God to move in our situation we are not willing to ask God to restore the joy of our salvation there are some people that I know that are gifted and anointed and appointed by God but they They've lost a step along the way. I don't care how gifted of a preacher you are, a gifted of a teacher you are, gifted of a doctor you are. If you are honest, every now and then, life happens to you and you can lose a step along the way. You know when you've lost a step, when you can't do what you do like you used to do it, you've lost the step. But God has said, all I'm doing is waiting on you to ask. All I'm doing is waiting on you to open up the door and I will pour out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive all I'm doing is waiting on you to ask all I'm doing is waiting on you to open the door and I will anoint you afresh I will give you wisdom to sing like you never sang before I will give you wisdom to preach like you never preached before I will give you wisdom to pastor like you never pastored before I will give you wisdom to be the husband the wife the son the daughter that you ain't never been but for some strange reason the people of God don't ask uh, and I think I have an understanding Jabri I think I done figured them out uh, I got it I got it figured out brother you know why they don't ask you know why they don't ask they don't ask brother because they don't believe yeah that's, that's the raw and the real think about it if I believe if, if, if you believe that on the other side of that door what, 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 what was your lick <laughs> what, what you been waiting on million dollars on the other side of that door and it was a combination on it. And I said, a million dollars on the other side of the door. I believe you would ask me for the luck combination and you would walk over there swiftly and get the door open. But when it comes to what God wants to do in our life, the reason we don't ask is because we don't believe. James wouldn't have told us. It's right here. He says, listen, ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. James said, he's a double-minded man. Ouch. Unstable in all his ways. Don't type it in if you're double-minded, but we've all been there. We want to be honest about it. The reason we don't ask God to anoint us afresh. The reason we don't ask God to do the impossible is because we get to that place where we doubt. And some of us started off believing, but because it didn't happen on our time schedule, because it didn't happen in the way we wanted it to happen, doubt starts to creep in. Listen, I wanna tell you something about doubt. Although we all do it, this text reminds us that if we want anything from God, we can never doubt. This is that point in service where if you've been doubting God, I hope I'm all in your feelings. I hope I'm stepping all over your toes. This is an opportunity for you to confess, God, I've been doubting you in this situation. I knew you could do a little bit, but I didn't uh, trust you enough with this one. This one was so big, God. If you've been doubting God, this is that point in the service where you can make a confession because James says if you want anything from him, you got to come to him in faith. Uh, and I want to talk to you about doubt. Doubt is a funny thing as it relates to the mind. Has any Anybody ever been to the fair before? In the fair, they have these distorting mirrors. They call them fun house mirrors. Anybody ever seen a fun house mirror? It's when you go into the mirror and sometimes you look fat, sometimes you look
look skinny. Sometimes you look tall. Sometimes you look short. Instead of a normal mirror, it distorts the image. And what's in the image is funny. But what happens spiritually when we've been looking at a distorted mirror? Spiritually, when we've been looking at our situation through a distorted lens? Spiritually, when we've been praying to God through distorted prayers? All of a sudden, because God has not responded, all of a sudden, because we are still in pain, all of a sudden, our mind plays tricks on us and here comes our worst enemy called doubt. Doubt starts to creep up on us. It's like a ship being tossed by the waves on the sea. There's a video of a cruise ship being tossed by the waves of the sea. James said that's what happened when you allow doubt to creep into your situation. The most dangerous place to doubt God is just when you need him the most. Uh, I've heard testimonies of individuals who have been loved in the Lord all of their life who have been praising the Lord all of their life and the Lord sent a test they way that was beyond their understanding and the enemy started to send doubt they way and just because the enemy started to send doubt uh, when doubt starts to come your way uh, it's up to you how you respond to it but listen what James said is if we were to be honest uh, while we should respond in faith uh, most of us are double minded there you go with some of them old King James words again. Can I make it plain to you? When you look at the word double-minded in the Greek, it says it's a person that is two-souled, a person that is split in half. It's kind of like a schizophrenic. In other words, when you have doubt and you call yourself a believer, you are walking around here like a spiritual schizophrenic. You are two people wrapped in one. That's why your mind is playing tricks on you because what you learn in the word of God is not always lining up with what you're going through it has you wrestling with what is real but I want to tell you something if you are wrestling with what is real I dare you to give the Lord one more chance if you are wrestling with what is real I dare you to hold on a little while longer is there anybody that's going to talk to me and know that you've been wrestling with a situation You've been wrestling with what is real. Uh, you've been wrestling what the Bible says uh, in comparison to what the news says. Uh, you've been wrestling what Jesus said uh, in comparison to what other faiths said. Uh, oh, y'all ain't gonna feel me now. Uh, there's a whole lot of folk. Uh, they call themselves woke. Uh, and they've come to the conclusion uh, that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, is not the real God uh, there's another crowd uh, they follow the Old Testament uh, but they don't call it that man named Jesus uh, they don't follow Jesus uh, their mind is playing tricks on them uh, what happened was in the middle of their struggle uh, in the middle of their questions uh, the enemy sent doubt their way uh, he started to whisper in their ear uh, I told you your faith ain't real I told you the church ain't real. Them people can't help you. You wasting your time. Why don't you go do something else? But men and women of God, James said you got to fight against doubt like your life depends on it. You got to fight against doubt like your life depends on it. Come here a little closer. You got to fight against doubt uh, like your life depends on it. Uh, and if you stand against the enemy's attack, uh, if you stand against the war in your mind, uh, the Lord promises to give you perfect peace uh, if you keep your eye on him. Uh, I want to tell you what Paul said uh, in the book of Philippians. Uh, and we're going to go on to the house. Uh, he remind us in that fourth chapter that not to be anxious about anything. Uh, somebody right now uh, is dealing with anxiety. It's a trick on your mind. Paul says in everything, uh, by prayer and petitions to the Lord, uh, I wish I had some saints uh, that believe in the power of prayer. Paul said, give thanks to the Lord. Make your request known unto God. Uh, what happens, Paul, when I pray like that? Uh, Paul said that the peace of God, 
which passes all understanding. Uh, that means that when you're going through, uh, the folk around you won't understand why you still lift up holy hands. Uh, they won't understand uh, why you still press your way to worship. Uh, I wish I had some folk uh, that been through enough mess uh, that you could have gave up on God. But you quick to realize uh, that God never gave up on you. Uh, and the folks that gave up on God, the folks that's telling you to give up on God, it's the same one that won't answer your text message. Uh, it's the same one that can't help you. Uh, I need some folks to help me who realize where the help come from. Uh, Paul tells us this, uh, whenever your mind is troubled, uh, Whenever you are going through, uh, he says you got to meditate. Uh, what am I meditating on, Paul? Meditate on the truth of his word. Uh, meditate on his promises. Uh, meditate on his love. Uh, meditate on his excellence. Uh, meditate on his goodness. Uh, but my mind is playing tricks on me. You got to meditate on his love. Uh, you got to meditate on his goodness. Uh, you ought to have a thank you list uh, whenever I'm going through uh, and I'm going through for real uh, I go through my thank you list uh, God everything ain't perfect uh, but I thank you for Jonah I thank you for Jacob uh, I thank you for Joshua I thank you for Tiffany God I had a bad day uh, but I thank you for my job I remember when I didn't have a job God, my wife getting on my nerves a little bit, uh, but I thank you for giving me a wife. Uh, I'm just trying to help you. Uh, everybody ought to have a thank you list. Uh, so when your mind starts to play tricks on you, but if that don't bless you, I want you to look at Peter's testimony. Peter has a powerful testimony about the mind playing tricks on you. Peter was walking with Jesus. Uh, and Jesus went out uh, and started walking on the lake. Uh, that's right, he was walking on top of the water. And Peter saw it. Uh, and Peter said, Lord, uh, if that's really you, uh, let me come out there to you. But uh, Jesus said, Peter, uh, take courage. Uh, don't be afraid. I want to talk to somebody's mind right now uh, and tell you to take courage. Uh, and don't be afraid. Uh, Jesus is encouraging you to get out of the boat. Uh, Peter gets out of the boat uh, and he starts to walk on the water. But something happened to Peter. Something happened to his mind. Uh, the Bible says uh, that he saw the wind uh, and he became afraid. Uh, we think Peter sunk uh, just because he took his eyes off of Jesus. Uh, but that ain't the reason that he sunk. Uh, the reason Peter went down uh, is because his mind started playing tricks on him. Uh, his mind said, look at them waves. Uh, his mind said, look at that sea. Uh, it's sharks down there. Boy, you can't swim. What you get out this boat for? Boy, you can't make it. The other disciples stayed in the boat. Uh, Peter, you done lost your mind. This water is cold. You might get frostbitten. Peter, you crazy. It's too late now, Peter. Boy, you about to drown. And before you know it, the man was talking to Peter. And before you know it, Peter started to go under. But I'm glad today. Thank God today. Even though Peter's mind played tricks on him, he had a friend by the name of Jesus who met him right where he was, sinking in the sea. Met him right where he was, didn't let him go under. Met him right where he was, wouldn't let him fall. I'm just trying to preach to you because something has been talking to you and telling you it's time to get out of the boat. But your mind is telling you, you ain't got the skills. Your mind is telling y'all, you ain't ready. Your mind is telling y'all, 
Don't you know how many businesses are crashing? Uh, don't you know how many folk going bankrupt? Uh, don't you know how high the divorce rate is? Uh, don't you know how many people got the virus? Uh, don't you know how bad the economy is? Uh, don't you know what politics look like? Uh, your mind is talking to you. The doctor came in the room uh, and said it don't look good. <laughs> Based on his medical opinion, uh, your mind is talking to you. The judge then told your son uh, for the last mistake that they made, uh, they got to go away for a long time. Uh, your mind is talking to you. Uh, it's telling you it ain't going to get better. Uh, that is going to be worse. Uh, but I'm here to remind you, uh, we still got a friend. Uh, and his name is Jesus, uh, and he declares uh, that if we trust in him uh, and never doubt, uh, he will not let us fall. Uh, I wish I had some folk uh, that'll help me preach, uh, because you know God blocked it, uh, and he would not let you fall. Uh, you messed up a lot, uh, bad choices a lot. Uh, bad decisions a lot uh, but God blocked it <laughs> he wouldn't let you fall <laughs> now you've gotten to the place uh, that you ain't worried about the tricks of your mind uh, you've gotten to the place uh, where you realize uh, where your help comes from let's celebrate God one more time in the sanctuary to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the door to the house of God stands open. That's our way of saying, listen, God has spoken to you today. We were, he was talking about being mindful of what he has said. In what your situation is saying, be mindful of what he has said in comparison to what your situation is saying. Be mindful of what he has said in comparison to what the world amount you may be saying. And now he's saying, I want you to be mindful of what I'm saying to you in this moment. In this moment, you have an opportunity to respond to whatever God may be saying to you. If you hear that individual and you need some prayer, you need somebody to love on you a little extra, you need a little assistance, we want you to hit the prompt on the screen so we can connect with you immediately. Because when we have this type of conversation, like I said earlier, there are some, it's gonna be a process. You need spiritual healing as well as physical that we wanna connect you and make sure you get what you need. In order for you to get what you need, it requires you to have a relationship with Jesus. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? If you do, type yes testify that you you have a relationship with Jesus if you if you can't type yes with assurance that means that maybe you've never said with your mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God that you believe that he died for your sins and you believe that one day he shall soon return and if you believe that and you're willing to confess that you ought to say amen. You ought to type that in. And if you're the person that made that confession of faith for the first time, if you're a person that is rededicating yourself to that, we want to hear from you so we can minister to you, so we can pray with you and give you next steps because this is the beginning to your greatness. And if you're that individual that's been looking for a church home, you've been praying about a place where you and your family can grow, you've been praying about a place where you can get connected to your purpose, if God is talking to you about that in any capacity, we want to give you, we want to extend this invitation to you. The door of the house of God stands open. We love you. We're praying for you. And this is the last thing that I want to leave you with. There are some who have shared that they want to know more about the ministry, more about our beliefs, more about our values. Go ahead on that link. There are a variety of different options. If you want to know more about the ministry and how you can get connected, even if you don't live in Charlotte, if you're that person that just wants to understand what God is doing here, you want to be connected virtually, I encourage you to hit that link as God is speaking to your heart. We're excited about what God is doing. We're God excited about what God is saying. 
And we trust and pray that you will respond to whatever God is saying to your heart today. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may heaven smile upon you. Amen. Amen.